Demogorgons, government conspiracies, supernatural monsters, telekinetic teenagers, oh, it's so good. Unless you're living in an underground bunker waiting for the world to end, let's be honest, we should all be at this point. Then you know the second season of Stranger Things is finally here. Part glorious coming of age story, part 80s paranormal sci-fi nostalgia trip, the gang is back, and the town of Hawkins is facing its latest existential threat from the upside down. Hashtag justice for Barb. Well, no. As much as I could spend hours talking up this pitch perfect show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've been doing that all week. All right, all right. So I spent two days binge watching the new season. Look at the bags under my eyes. Look at them. I noticed something interesting. Wait, hold up. Where's the thing? Uh, play them the thing. This episode of Buzz does not contain any spoilers to the hit Netflix program Stranger Things, though it may explore the premise behind the show as a colourful means of approaching more serious issues. We here at the channel have no intention of ruining your favourite TV show. So calm down. It's 1984 and we see the world around Hawkins fleshed out. Ghostbusters is in the cinemas, VCRs are all the rage, everyone's talking about the Russians. Hmm, that last one rings a bell. The investigation into alleged links between Donald Trump's election campaign and Russia has taken a dramatic turn. Russia tried to boost Donald Trump's chances. Russian interference in our U.S. election. Russian hackers. Russian military intelligence. It's Russia week. The Russians are coming! The Russians are coming! The thing is with science fiction, or good science fiction, is that it uses aliens and monsters to try and reflect what we're really afraid of. Back in the 80s, if you lived in the U.S., it was that Russians were trying to infiltrate your country and create chaos and confusion. And in 2017, it's that Wait a minute. Is the Cold War still going? This is boss. Let's go. Hello? Hello? Russian. Huh? Who's there? You are fake news. No! Listen, I'm squarely a 90s kid, but I have a lot of time for 80s nostalgia. The bold colors, the booming synthesizers, the double denim, the shameless power glam. But there was a lot going on at that time. Namely, the Cold War was coming to an end and paranoia against the Soviet Union was ripe in America. Everyone was thought to be a Russian spy and that filtered into the imagination of the public. Think of E.T., Close Encounters of the Third Kind, Aliens, Blade Runner, Predator, and of course, Ghostbusters, the greats from that time, all about trying to understand beings from a different world. It all started back in the 50s, when Cold War panic and the threat of nuclear fallout was at its peak. The interest in sci-fi just skyrocketed. Why? It was a form of escape, a way of channeling people's anxieties. Back in the first season, we find out our kick-ass heroine, Eleven, is part of a secret program to spy on Soviet agents. I mean, that of course quickly derails when she encounters something from an entirely different world. Ooh, it's creepy. You know what's interesting? There's a striking similarity between what's happening in the show and what's going on in our world right now. I mean, just last week, the FBI sentenced Donald Trump's former campaign manager and a business associate with conspiring against the US. It's huge. Huge. And comes after a five month investigation into the press and his inner circle and their ties to Russia. After all, it was Russian hackers who tried to sabotage Hillary Clinton's campaign last year and put Trump in office. Now we're all on the edge of our seats to see who the FBI goes after next. Could it go all the way after Donald Trump? Was he in on it too? Could he be impeached? Drama! 
It's a hell of a story, right? The once seemingly stable democracy of the United States has now turned into the political equivalent of a Jenga tower. <laughs> to make matters worse, cyber hacking, internet trolls and fake news have now become the new global norm. Used by foreign and private interests to do everything from blackmailing people with their private information to sabotaging elections. Over the last year we saw it, fake news was a major factor in how we talked about elections in France, the UK with Brexit and of course the US. So is it any wonder we're turning back to sci-fi for a sense of escape? And Stranger Things is the perfect pill. Think about it. A group of tech-savvy teens is the town's only hope of fighting off the evils erupting from a strange new world that connects us all. <coughs> the internet. <coughs> the adults are powerless to do anything, and the kids with their walkie-talkies, come on, that's an easy one, their telekinetic abilities, and actual text messages on that weird fairy lights wall app thingy step up to save the day. I am not suggesting that Stranger Things is some conspiracy trying to stoke up anti-Russian sentiments. Or am I? But the stories we tell always unleash what lies beneath the surface. When we're anxious, we like stories that tell us that the good guys are good, the bad guys are bad, and that even though we don't understand the strange monsters coming from the upside down, dude, like literally the other side of the world, that ultimately goodness and friendship will prevail. It's comforting, right? Hold up. If Russia is the upside down, does that mean that Putin is the shadow monster? <laughs> But this isn't just about one show. Russians never really stopped playing a part in Hollywood. They've often been the bad guy, which, and I can say this as a Muslim, is not cool, man. Ivan Drago from Rocky IV, Xenia Onatop from GoldenEye, Ivan Korshinov from Air Force One. And it looks like that fascination ain't dying down anytime soon. I mean, take the show The Americans, which kicked off in 2013. It's about two KGB agents undercover in Washington DC in the 80s. You see? Dude, you ever realize that Gru from Despicable Me has a super Russian sounding accent? You will not cry, or whine, or laugh, or giggle. And what's he trying to do when we first meet him? Trying to steal the moon. He eventually sees the error in his ways with the help of three adorable young American kids and learns to embrace the American way of life. But all of this is more than just a coincidence. A really, really passive aggressive coincidence. My Russian accent's horrible. <laughs> <laughs> Hollywood is America's strongest form of soft power. It's the way the country exports its own image and ideology to the rest of the world. And organizations like the CIA never really hid the fact that they were part of the process too. In 1996, they even made it official opened up shop in LA, the entertainment liaison office. The marriage between entertainment and politics in America has always existed. Whether we like it or not, we've been force-fed the American dream for decades. And during the Cold War, the cinema was where US propaganda spread its wings, painting an image of America and capitalism that was way more appealing than the communist alternative. Hey world, look at all this neat stuff we got. Coca-Cola, California, freedom. Don't you want a piece of this? Don't all this make communism look like totally lame? Come on everybody, all aboard the capitalism train. Destination, the United States of America. Really though, the US has just been subtweeting Russia this whole time. And as for the rest of us who don't live in the US or Russia, we've been forced to watch the world's longest game of ping pong between two countries that really just need to hug it out. Seriously guys, get a room. But with Hollywood, it doesn't always have to be propaganda. Not every screenwriter in LA is on some government payroll or part of some conspiracy to brainwash the masses. This is their plan, people. These are demons. But when we consume the entertainment coming out of Hollywood, we're being told the stories that America wants to tell itself about itself and about its enemy. Stranger Things could be a metaphor about Vladimir Putin stretching his shadowy tentacles into the ordinary lives of Americans to disrupt their realities and faith in democracy. Or not. But what's true is that the Russian threat has continued to exist in the back of American imaginations and that in Hollywood, the Cold War never really ended. And now that both countries are at it again, it's gonna be even harder to separate the truth from the fake news. Sad. It's very sad. But let's not get sucked into the paranoia. Don't be a mouth breather. Mouth breather? All things considered, Cold War or not, there's one thing that's absolutely true. I can't wait for season three. Hey world, thanks for watching. If you liked it, comment, subscribe, share. We'll see you next week. Guys, guys, how do I get out of the 80s? No, seriously, 
I don't know. Guys, I need Netflix. I can't just stay here. Guys? Hello? Hello?